Geronimo! I screamed when I dove into the middle of the ocean from the helicopter. Not yet. When I was under the water, I swam to the submarine and opened up the latch. Then I got in, closed the latch, and the water drained out. No, not yet. I took a breath and smiled. Hey, welcome back. Did you manage to steal the secret nuclear launch code? The first officer said as he opened the door and threw me a towel. Thanks, Dan, I said as I wiped my face. I didn't just get the launch codes. I even saved the Japanese princess in the process. We laughed and laughed and walked out of the room together. No, not yet. When I got to the control room, I said hi to everyone and then saluted my captain. At ease, soldier, he said to me. Congratulations on a mission complete. Now, we have to talk about... He hadn't even finished talking yet when we suddenly felt something crash against the submarine, shaking the entire boat, bringing everyone down to the ground. Everyone in the control room were scrambling to find out what it was, but all we could hear were whale sounds. And then we saw it. Hundreds and hundreds of orca whales and maybe... 50 to 100 humpback whales, too. They were ramming themselves against the submarine. No, no, not yet. What's happening? Somebody find out why these sea creatures are attacking us. As we tried our hardest to steer the submarine to the side, the whales circled around to one side and kept ramming themselves against the submarine. We no longer had any control over the direction we were going. Wait, wait, stop. They're pushing us towards something, I said. And when we stopped trying to fight against them, they stopped hitting themselves against the boat and instead were gently pushing us north as well as up. No, not yet. And then we saw it. It was like a disgusting black cloud of unnatural impending doom approaching us. None of us could believe what we were actually seeing. And it was garbage. And it wasn't just the surface, there was trash floating several meters below the surface too. We couldn't see anything for miles, and the higher we went, the more cloudy the water was. What's in the water? Uh, sir, we did a testing of the water and discovered that the cause of its cloudy characteristics is because it's extremely contaminated with small plastic particles that have been broken down over time. You see, many plastics don't actually wear down. They simply break into tinier and tinier pieces, and that's what we're seeing in the cloudy water surrounding the bigger and more apparent debris. I don't even want to think about what's at the bottom of the ocean, as most trash will eventually sink, the captain said. I snapped out of shock and I noticed that all the whales were gone. I realized that this was what they were pushing us towards. They wanted us to see what we had created and how we were destroying their home and killing their kind in the process. I prayed and prayed that this wasn't real, and I decided that I didn't want to be here anymore. So, okay, now. And then I woke up. I got up and stretched, and I realized that I had woken up just before my alarm went off. Are you wondering what happened? Well, actually, I'm just a regular girl that wakes up like everyone else, goes to school like everyone else, likes to hang out with my friends like everyone else, has to do homework like everyone else, and goes to sleep like everyone else. But the thing that I guess makes me different than most people is that when I dream, I'm fully aware of the fact that I'm dreaming. And not just that, but my dreams break the fourth wall. What does that mean exactly? Well, I can often sleep and have a dream inside a dream. I once woke up three times inside a dream, which means that I had three different dreams and woke up from one and then the next and then the next until I actually woke up in reality. Imagine it kind of like those matryoshka dolls, one inside the other. Weird, I know. In addition, I have realized that I have three layers of memory when I'm dreaming. I can remember previous things inside the dream, but also am aware of the memories from my real awake life. And when I wake up, I usually remember very well what I dreamt about. I can even remember things that I dreamt about years ago. It's pretty cool because sometimes I'm able to make the dream go as I want and I can control it at my will. I decided because of my dreams to study filmmaking. And to be honest, I feel like when I go to sleep, I'm directing and acting in a movie. But all this can have a scary side. Some months ago, I dreamt that I was being chased by the police while my friends and family were helping me to hide and escape. I somehow knew that I hadn't done anything wrong and that it was unfair, but I kept running and running and every time they found me. At some point, although somehow I knew it was a dream, I grew so stressed and so tired and I remember telling my mom exactly this. What if it isn't a dream? What if the life where I go to class and everything is normal is just a dream? And, 
and this is the reality. And that moment, I woke up. That thought scared me so much. When I woke up, I was very tense, breathing very heavily, and I had to turn on all the lights. It was so hard to fall asleep again. The thought about this reality being actually a dream was in my head the whole day, and even some days later, I caught myself casually thinking about it. It really messed me up for a while. Having all these deep layers and awareness inside my dreams makes them a bit creepy sometimes. But most of the time, it makes them so interesting and so structured. And as a filmmaker, I love that. I often find my inspiration from my dreams. And when I read about other film directors, I'm happy to know that I am not alone. They also take their dreams into account for their projects too. And it makes me feel a little bit less strange and more optimistic about what I'm doing every day. It would be so cool if I could take some of my dreams to the cinema one day. Hey guys! Okay, so even though the story about how she dreams is totally real from a submitter, the actual dream was of course made up. Unfortunately though, the existence of the giant garbage patch in the ocean is as real as it's gonna get. So I just wanted to take this opportunity to talk to you a little bit about what we can do together to help limit the amount of plastic in the ocean. This is something that isn't just affecting the sea animals in the ocean, but it also has a huge impact on our entire ecosystem, on our health and the future of our planet. And unfortunately, this isn't the only garbage patch either. It's just the largest and therefore the most famous. It's hard to put an exact measurement on it as its debris spreads over the Pacific Ocean to what's called the Western Garbage Patch, the Eastern Garbage Patch, and the Subtropical Convergence Zone. Not to mention the trash isn't just collecting on the surface, but some float a few meters below the surface too. It is currently estimated by the ocean cleanup at more than 1.6 million square kilometers, or more than 617,000 miles. That's two times the size of Texas, or three times the size of France and it's growing really fast. The scariest part is to think about how much is on the ocean floor. A lot of opinions are pointing to the fact that only a fraction of the ocean's plastic is on the surface, and that the vast majority is probably already on the ocean floor. It's estimated that there are approximately 1.8 trillion pieces of plastic in just that patch, which comes out to be about 250 pieces of plastic per human in the world. 250 pieces per person in a world with 7.53 billion people. Okay, 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 I'm gonna stop throwing numbers at you. If you want more details about how much trash is really in there, what it mostly consists of, or information about these tiny microplastics that's making its way back into our food supply, I've put some links in the description for you. So getting rid of it isn't as easy as just scooping it up and it just miraculously disappearing. It's an incredibly huge amount of toxic plastic trash. But also the issue is that it's not close enough to any countries, so no one is assuming responsibility for it. And even if they were to do so, it would probably bankrupt the entire country. The UN reported that the damage caused by plastic to our marine ecosystem represents 13 billion US dollars. The NOAA estimates that it would cost between $122 million and $489 million just to hire enough boats to clean the Great Pacific Garbage Patch per year. Guys, scientists estimate that by 2050, there will be more plastic than fish in the ocean. There is no more question about whether we are going to have to suffer the consequences. The question now is how bad the consequences will be. So it all comes back to us. How can we reduce the devastation and the severity of the effect? Of course, you can volunteer or donate money to foundations like the Ocean Cleanup that's working on a solution to clean up the trash. You can also volunteer or donate money to other foundations like the Ocean Conservancy, Surf Rider Foundation, Oceana, Sea Shepherd Conservation Society, and just so many more. You can also create and join beach cleanups and also be very avid about recycling. But the best, best thing you can do is reduction because we really need to slow way, way down the plastic production in the world so as to not add any more to the current catastrophe. The less we use, the less companies have to produce. How can you do that? Well, you should try to get rid of plastic wherever you can and replace it with wood or bamboo, silicone or rubber, glass or metal. With some things, it's harder than others, but for certain, we have to get rid of all single-use plastic. These include straws, coffee lids and stirrers, plastic cups and plastic cutlery, plastic bags, soda and water bottles, most food packaging, plastic wraps, cotton buds, <laughs> just to name a few. So what are some ways that you can help to reduce and cut out plastic altogether? 
Well, one thing you can do is when you go to the supermarket or go buy anything, take reusable bags with you. There are even reusable mesh bags for produce like veggies and fruits. Bring and fill up your own water bottle instead of buying. Say N-O to straws. I know it's hard, but you can buy bamboo or stainless steel straws or just use your own trusty travel mug. Buy bamboo cotton buds and use scrubs that use natural substances like sugar and salt instead of plastic microbeads. Use bar soaps instead of buying new plastic bottles every time you run out. Don't use plastic plates, cups, or cutlery. Use either the ones you have or buy paper ones. These are only some of the ways that you can help. For more details on how you can help, we put some great links in the description that you should definitely check out. And to those that are already environmentally conscious, if you have more tips and suggestions, please add them in the comments below. And let me know if this is a topic of interest for you and if you would like me to make more detailed videos about what you and I can do to help the environment.